Good afternoon, Yorktown. It's Supervisor Matt Slater coming to you from Town Hall, joined by our Highway Superintendent, Dave Paganelli. Yorktown. And, and of course, our Chief of Police, Robert Noble. Good afternoon. We are coming to you with an important update on Tropical Storm Elsa. This is the first storm of what is expected to be a pretty active hurricane season, so it's going to be a good test run for us. We actually had a test run just the other day, Tuesday, Tuesday night, evening. Yep. Uh, where we had some pretty strong thunderstorms come through. Uh, we had about 1,500 people, nice egg customers without power. Um, we had zero of uh, Con Ed customers without power. Uh, but our, our police department, our highway de department, and, of course, NYSEG did a great job getting uh, those NYSEG customers back online uh, really within about 12 hours, uh, a little bit longer than that. Yeah, NYSEG was excellent. They yep. did a very, very good job. But it's always important to remember the basics, uh, always important to be prepared. So this is a great test run in, in, in that regard. Uh, just quickly, the storm is expected to, well, it's already starting to rain outside, uh, and uh, the storm is expected to really... Uh, peak here Friday morning. Uh, we've been in touch with both Con Ed and NYSEG already. We've already uh, spoken with them uh, about their plans and the crews that they'll have. We've also been in touch with uh, both the, the Mohegan Fire Department and the Yorktown Fire Department as well. Uh, everyone obviously uh, very well prepared uh, for uh, the weather coming our way. But again, peak of the storm is supposed to be tomorrow morning. That would be Friday morning. Uh, we're expecting upwards of about two and a half inches of rain. Most of the models show the storm uh, veering off to our south and east, uh, but there is always that possibility. And we, I think we saw this with uh, Isaias, that it shifted, uh, and it shifts more north and west and, and lands right in our front yard. So uh, very important, again, just to be prepared um, with, uh, with the weather coming our way. Um, but I wanted to turn it over to our highway superintendent to provide uh, a few well, I was I was going to do the weather. Well, you were going to, and do yeah, the we had talked about this earlier, and you know, <laughs> I was going to do the weather, right? I mean, and now you stole the weather, so you know, and and yes, it is raining outside, you know, because if it was raining inside, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> that, Would not be good. that. That being said, um, highway, um, as you're, sh I'm sure you're aware, we've been out since Tuesday. Um, now we're doing cleanups, so hopefully this will be a non-event for us. We are anticipating some um, flooding in areas that are prone to flooding. Um, if we get two and a half inches of rain, every area in Yorktown will be prone to flooding. There's no way our drainage system could handle that. So, you know, it'll eventually settle down. Everything will go in the catch basins, and the storm drains, and we'll be in good shape. Um, that being said, you know, we just ask that um, with respect to when we're not at highway, which is we're there from 7 a.m. to 3, if we're not there and a tree comes down or you're aware of something that's a safety issue, please notify our police department, 962-4141, um, and they are immediately um, in contact with us. We, we had a great partnership this last event. Um, it, started, it started, you know, at about 6 o'clock and in 15 minutes. And I know most of our town didn't experience horrendous weather. And I've done some research since then. And my, my take on it would be that we had microbursts. That would be, you know, with the, with the, you know, horizontal, you know, vert, horizontal winds and the way we had damage we sustained. So we did have some areas that got hit very, very hard. Um, you know, took nice eggs, um, credit. They were incredibly responsive. We were on the phone with them, the supervisor, myself, the chief, all night long, you know, coordinating response and getting roads opened. So, you know, bear in mind that we are prepared for this. Um, we ask you to be prepared. Um, the chief will touch on that. Um, the only thing I'll say is my usual, um, and I always get teased for this, um, that he, you should fill your bathtub with water, and that's not to drink. That's so that you can, you know, because the chief said people are going to start drinking their water out of their bathtub. So that that, that being said. But don't knock it till you try it. I, well, I know, but, you know, you better have a very clean wife. Um, that being said, <laughs> that being said, you want that water to flush your toilets with should we lose power. So that would be the purpose. Take the water out of the out of the bathtub, put it in the tank of the toilet, and that will give you water to flush your toilets with. So, and that's an important thing during a prolonged power outage. <laughs> the, so you feel free on, to make fun of me. Beyond the tub, <laughs> uh, one of the things that, and I don't know if Chief, if you're going to touch upon this, but one of the things that obviously we get a lot of are trees 
So trees? If, we if tree have or, had a few tree issues. You just provide our residents just with some do's and don'ts with trees when they come Stay down. Stay away they, from they the trees. trees when they're right. especially in the wires. We actually, that was part of the, you know, the communication with NYSIG that we needed them to clear the wires, make those areas safe so that we could come out and take care of those trees. And they were very, very good about it. And I think that was the reason we experienced such a quick um a quick restoration time. I mean, the first power went out at 6.30 Tuesday evening, and everybody, for the most part, with, with 27 or something to that effect, was up and running by 5.30 the next morning, which is amazing. You know, that's, that's a great response. Do you want to just review quickly, because if there are trees that are in the roadways, what your responsibility is versus trees that are on people's property? Correct. So trees on private par property... The town um, will address it as we did with Isaiah's. Um, if we sustain substantial damage, we'll waive fees if need be at our um, recycling yard at 2200 Greenwood Street so that you could have your landscapers bring things from your property up there. Hopefully that will not be the issue. We won't experience that town-wide decimation that we did back in August. Um, that being said, trees that fall from your property onto the town roads the town will come out highway will come out cut those trees back to our right of way we cannot go on private property right. trees fall out of town property onto your property easements um open space um conservation property wetlands those the law is that wherever the tree falls, if there's been no prior written notice to the effect that this tree was a danger and there were there would no be no possible prior written notice because everything that fell had leaves on it. You know, a lot of people say, Oh, you're you know, you're not aggressively taking down dead trees. We didn't have one dead tree fall out of forty seven trees that came down. So, you know, just bear in mind that, you know, that becomes your responsibility to clean it up if it falls onto your property. And if, it, and if they do have a tree down, who are they calling first? So if it's during the work hours, they can call either the PD or they can call Highway 9625781, or they can call the PD and they would contact us. But during traditional work hours, 7 to 3, Monday through Friday, we would be at Highway to answer the phone and take care of those calls. Great. Chief, what do you want to add? I've done some research as well. And um, Dave, you're Italian. Right, half Irish and half Italian. Well, I, I, I'm the worst of all worlds. I researched <laughs> the last name Paganelli, and the Italian translation is Little friend. Fall, falling trees. No, uh, <laughs> so I think it's court doing... jester. Actually, <laughs> oh, okay. uh, listen, uh, you know what? We work hand in hand. Like I said, supervisors, to your credit, and Dave, you know, our crew and your crew have a very, very good relationship. So we're we're ready to support and and help out um, with what the supervisor and um, and uh, Dave have been saying is if a, if a tree falls on your yard, we really don't want to know. I mean, that's not a hazard. If it right. falls on your house or, you know, or, or it's creating a hazard and wires are down, that's certainly something you can let us know about. Um, if you do happen to lose power, please contact your utility provider. Please don't call the police department right. to let us know that, that you've lost power. That's a utility issue. And um, I know we, we're good about sharing the uh, the utility provider phone numbers on both the town website and our police department and, and highway as well. So um, you should have those numbers. Right. Well, yeah. Now, they, now, now it's that, activated again. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, the censorship has ended. The censorship. But, um, <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> no. Um, you know, with the storm, hopefully, like I said, uh, we, uh, you know, we hope for the best, right, and we prepare for the worst. So we're ready to go just like we usually are at the police department. Um, what I'd like to remind people about and what um, we actually shared a post from Con Ed earlier today is that if the wires do come down, um, you just never know what has that electrical current right now. Fixed objects like guide rails and um, street signs, they could be energized. So please... Puddles um, of water. Well, you, you, you want to continue? No, oh, you go ahead. <laughs> it's just me, little Ab tree. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, Excuse me. <laughs> what I was going to discuss, so with that, with the energy, the, uh, the electrical current, please be careful about that. With the ponding of water, like you had discussed. And I'm the puddles, sorry, did I say that? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to say it. Um, it. Be careful when you're driving because 
you're going to hydroplane, if, especially if your tires aren't good. We always tell, you know, people tend to check the tires in the winter before the, before the snow season. But, you know, if you don't have, uh, you know, good tires on your car, you're going to hydroplane. And that's an experience you don't, you don't really want. So if you're out and about tomorrow and, and you need to drive, um, please keep that in mind. Take it nice and slow. Uh, also, as far as um, what was the other thing I was going to tell you, you threw me off with the with the I'm ponding, sorry. but it'll never happen again. If we <laughs> do, if we do happen to lose, you know, some traffic signals out there, and they do go on flash or they are just dark, remember those traffic intersections are four way stop intersections. There is no right of way. Everybody is expected to stop at those intersections and to proceed accordingly. So, uh, so please keep that in mind. Like you said, Supervisor, hopefully this is just, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of rain and it, and it moves on, but it does put you in the mindset that the hurricane season is here. So make those preparations. Take a look at your, uh, you know, your batteries or, or, you know, or anything else. Make sure you have your phone chargers that work. Uh, always good to have, you know, plenty of bottled water on hand. Um, the man behind the curtain there, Tom Siangelo. What did he um, tell us? He's got the best hair out of all of us. Yeah, he does. Um, well, but, well you know, it's easy for me. <laughs> yeah, he, you know, he recommends that you have two and a half gallons per person of drinkable water. Not out of the tub. <laughs> which, right, well, you would need to fill two bathtubs in order to flush all that water if you start drinking two and a half gallons of water a day. Probably. But, you know. You need to be properly hydrated, and that's that is sound and, and it's good advice. So um, again, let's you know nobody here is overreacting. We're just trying to put you in a good place, let you know that that your team is ready. You know your exactly. Yorktown team is ready if if things do go you know bad, but um, you know just just get in that mindset, prepare for um, you know prepare for the hurricane season and and, and blackouts and, and things like that, and you know we'll we'll adjust. There's a plan in place, and um, if you need us. You call us, we're there 24-7, 962-4141, in an emergency, 911, and, um, you know, stay safe out there, everybody. If it's lousy out and you don't have to drive, please don't. Thank you, Chief. I have a rebuttal. Yes, sir. <laughs> so You certainly do. <clears throat> Excuse me. That being said, um, while the Chief was speaking, I had a thought, and I, I came as a result of an experience I had the other evening. When we have these weather-related events, I would encourage our residents to reduce their speed immeasurably. You don't know if you come around a bend, and uh, the prime example was we had a tree down on Ridge Street, person was coming north on Ridge Street, came around the bend by Van Cortland Circle, and almost hit the tree. You know, they didn't see it. There's no notification. The tree could come down. It wasn't there an hour ago. It's all of a sudden down. So you need to drive defensively. You really... You need to be responsible for your own actions, and please, please drive carefully. We don't want anyone getting hurt because they ran into a tree, filled the wires, and that's that's not a good good scenario. So, Thank sorry. You, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Yorktown, there you go. There's your latest on Tropical Storm Elsa from the utility companies to our first responders to highway and, of course, our police department. The town is ready to go. We hope you are too. Just another friendly reminder, hurricane season is here and we encourage you to be prepared. If you have any questions, you can, again, call Highway. You can call the police department. Can, you can call us here at can Town you, Hall. Can you mention about why would they name it Elsa? Could you mention that part? Well, I don't – well, well. <laughs> you're upset because you wanted snow. Well, no, I didn't want snow, but Elsa was from Frozen, and I don't understand why they would name a hurricane after Frozen. I'm just <laughs> totally perplexed. I, I, oh. I don't have a good answer for you, Dave. Well, thank you. you <laughs> have you an answer for me? No, so if, if you're yeah. <laughs> Dave, in the words so of I, Elsa, so Dave, I so I stand in limbo here with in, no answer. Dave, in the words of Elsa, let it go. Okay. <laughs> All right, Yorktown, stay well, stay safe. We'll see you soon.